Hi guys, Michelle Maddox, your geography instructor here with a review of the exam one. I've just completed grading them. All the students have finished uh, taking the test so I was able to grade it. And uh, you can see your grades by going to the grade center in our blackboard. You can just click on my grades as I showed in a previous video. And uh, just a, a review, there were 20 multiple choice questions. You received one point for each right answer, zero points for wrong answer. There were four short answer questions worth four points each, and I'll be reviewing what I was looking for in those answers in just a moment. And then there was one extra credit short answer question worth three points. So uh, the scores are given as percentages. The total number of points for the exam was 40. So the, um, the percentage reflects how many you got right out of that 40, the percentage that you got right. So let's take a look now at the questions and the answers, or at least what I was looking for in these answers. Starting with, describe how the Earth's seasons would be affected if the Earth's axis were tilted at an angle of 40 degrees instead of 23.5 degrees. So if you did that, the Earth would be pointing more or far, more or less, away from the Sun than it is now. At a 23 degree angle, it's like this, you can imagine, and at a 40 degree angle, it just intensifies things. So what that means is there's going to be more of the Earth's surface that's getting uh, direct overhead sunlight in the summer, and then more of the Earth's surface receiving no sunlight at all during the winter. So the effect there would be to have uh, the summer extend further north and south, and the winter also to be colder further north and further south. So we would have an intensification of the seasons, and that would primarily be due to uh, longer days in the summer, shorter nights or shorter days in the winter, and uh, the, the more receipt of solar radiation for larger portions of the Earth. So that's basically what I was looking for there. And you got some kind of um, points depending on if you were able to describe some or all of that. The next question we'll look at is this one. How is the energy budget for the Earth atmosphere determined? How does it relate to latent and sensible heat? This was the extra credit question. The energy budget is determined by the following equation that you see here, which is basically the amount of incoming solar radiation minus the amount of outgoing solar radiation. That gives us a measure of how much solar radiation is left. And then we add to that the same thing for long wave radiation, the amount coming in minus the amount going in. And when we add those two together, it gives us a measure of how much energy is left over uh, for the Earth atmosphere system. So that energy can go towards two different things. It can go towards heating the air or cooling the air if there's a deficit. And that is called sensible heat. And it can also go towards, changing a, towards causing a phase change in water. Uh, and that is called latent heat. All right. The next question is explain how lenticular clouds are formed. Lenticular clouds are formed uh, when airflow, horizontal airflow, meets a mountain or hills and it causes a disruption in the airflow. So on the windward side, the wind's coming in, you can imagine it's straight horizontal wind flow. And then on the leeward side of the mountain, it's caused a wave to form. And that's sometimes called a stand wave, so some people um, used that expression. And on the wave, on the high points of the wave, the air is forced to rise up a little bit higher and it can cause clouds to form if the temperature reaches its dew point temperature and condensation occurs. And those clouds can spread out in those peak areas of the standing wave and they are shaped in lens-shaped clouds, hence the lenticular clouds. So that's the six there. Next, explain the green effect and its significance. Greenhouse effect is just a name given to the phenomenon that the Earth's atmosphere is transparent. In other words, it allows solar radiation in once the solar radiation heats up the surface and the Earth gets long wave G, the Earth's atmosphere absorbs that energy some of it. And it does of this naturally in the Earth's air. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, and uh, some other. So this is really a phenomenon of Earth's atmosphere is a cell life on Because if it didn't have all of that, it would just escape to and warm Earth. We would not have a warm enough Earth for life as we know it. Some of you get the greenhouse effect confused with uh, global warming and things that we'll talk about in the last chapter of this book. Uh, sometimes called the runaway greenhouse effect, where if we add more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, it's going to intensify the greenhouse effect. 
That's another subject, but the greenhouse effect is just simply that. We have gases in the atmosphere that allow sunlight in, but um, traveling long wave radiation and warm the earth. All right, next one. What is the lag of the maximum? When does it occur and why? The lag of the maximum refers to the lag in time between the maximum insulation, incoming solar radiation, versus the maximum temperature of the day or the year. So lag of the maximum can happen on a daily scale as well as an annual scale. On a daily scale, an area receives its maximum, but the hottest temperature of the day is a few hours later, anywhere from 2 to 4 in the afternoon, depending on the as that heats up, the it takes to then, uh, it's emitting, it's measured as temperature. This on a annual scale, for example, in the northern hemisphere, which is at the end of June, um, temperature isn't reached. Again, the lag of the maximum. Okay, the next question, and how does it form? That falls from the sky as the snow encounters a that can be very thick, melt into liquid round, is freezing. The things on the surface around itself, the trees, all are freezing, so it's just contact, and you end up with, if you ever experience this, you look out, everything's normal, but as soon as you see, it's very dangerous. Those are all the questions that you understand of anything that you do in class grade. So if you didn't do as well in the exam as you had hoped, labs and you're participating in the next exam. All right, that's it. Bye for now. I'll talk to you. Bye. Was I just talking?